Welcome to the next section in these videos, Shiny and JavaScript. In this section, we're going to just take a look at making JavaScript easy with the Shiny JS package, simple Shiny and JavaScript integration, doing more with JavaScript using the extend Shiny JS function from the Shiny JS package, sending messages to and from your server using JavaScript, and using crosstalk and HTML widgets to link outputs together. In this video, we'll be looking at using easy JavaScript functions using the Shiny JS package. We'll be looking at how to enable and disable controls, how to change the appearance of elements, how to reset controls, and how to modify the DOM, i.e. the document object model, with JavaScript. First, we need to install the Shiny JS package. Once we've done that, let's look first at the application in action. The first piece of functionality that we've added disables the year and genre controls when the table tab is selected. We don't want users to change these values when they're looking at a list of movies, so it can be useful to disable them. The next function is the ability to turn the text in the table red, like this. We add the ability to reset the year and genre controls. This can be useful in a complicated application where your user either can't remember all the defaults or doesn't want to spend the time resetting them all. Lastly, we add a hover event such that hovering over the year selector gives a readout of the current values for year. Hover events can be useful to give your user more information about your application without overloading the actual interface. Let's look at the code. The first thing to note is that we load Shiny.js in both the server and UI files. The second thing to note is that we place the useShinyJS function somewhere within the UI file. It's good practice to put it in the top so you can find it easily. There's a bit of work to do in both the server and the UI files for most of the functionality we mentioned. So let's look at each of the added functions in turn, examining the code for each. The application achieves enabling and disabling of controls in two different ways, which obviously makes no sense in a real application, but is done here for illustrative purposes. The first way is done like this. We observe the currently selected tab. If it is the table, we disable the genre control. If it is not, we enable it. A simpler form of this code is shown in the next section, controlling the year. Toggle state simply takes the name of a control, in this case year, and a condition, in this case the currently selected table. The control will be enabled if the condition is true, and disabled if it is false. Changing the appearance of the table is carried out with the toggle class function. This allows a class to be added and removed. The first argument is the ID of the element the second, the name of the class, and the third, the condition which should toggle the class. As you can see here, the state of input dollar sign red table toggles the element with id the table with the class red table. Let's look at the UI file to see how it's set up to work with this code. We can see firstly the setup of the class within the head of the HTML, as defined using the tags function. The id of the table that we want to format red is given in the definition here, and that's all it takes to get the red toggle working. The reset function is used to reset the controls to their default values, taking either the ID of an individual element or a div containing many. As you can see here, we give an ID that corresponds on the UI file to a div with that ID. The function then resets the control whenever input dollar sign reset is pressed. Input dollar sign reset being an action button we set up in the UI previously. Lastly, we'll look at using the on event function to list the currently selected years on the screen when the user hovers over the control. On event can be used to listen for any of the things which jQuery can. Click, double click, hover, mouse down, mouse enter, mouse leave, mouse move, mouse out, mouse over, mouse up, key down, key press, key up. In this case, we use on event hover to wait for a hover over the specified control, that is, the year control. When the user hovers over it, we add the text from the control here to the element with the ID control list. Over on the UI selection, you can see the paragraph being set up here with that ID. And that's it for Shiny.js. There are more options and functions available, so have a look through the documentation and see what else you can do with it. 